this week, those of us in the Northwest have been singing, Roll out those lazy, hazy, crazy days of spring. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. This episode number 106. Yep, 106. I'm going to be drinking yet another Rubens Hazy IPA. They're non-stop crush. I believe crush is a kind of an ongoing theme for Rubens Hazy IPAs and not just their Hazy IPAs I think. Um, I have had their Crush the Groove on this channel as well as a few other other Hazy IPAs and uh, when I look at Rubens brews uh, beers on the store walls, store shelves, those things, the places where you go to a place where you exchange money for goods, and those goods are beers made by Rubens Brewing, those places, um, they have a lot of crush involved in their branding, and indeed it looks as though, if I just read the can, I would have seen there is indeed a Rubens Crush series. There's hops in the logo, so I'm guessing that has to do with IPAs. <laughs> Uh, sometimes the pursuit of special ingredients takes you to faraway places. Ruben's non-stop crush brings notes of pineapple, passion fruit, gooseberry, and pine. Back from Australia and New Zealand, where we sourced the Galaxy, Nelson Sauvin, and Vic Secret hops in this pillowy IPA. Seat backs and tray tables up. A pillowy IPA. I mean, I guess in the context of a, of a hazy where... You're expecting those softer, juicy, tropical notes. Pillowy could be an appropriate uh, adjective. Certainly in the in the head of this thing, pillow is uh, very appropriate. That's a very fine, very thick head that poured initially. And it's quite happy to come back, if you can see that. Um, Nelson Sauvin. That reminds me of a wild ale that I had at Olympia Tap Room last fall or earlier this year, one day. I believe I talked about it on the channel, not drinking the beer, but um, just talking about it after I drunk it. Um, Nelson, Nelson Hose, that's right, it was the Nelson Hose by somebody or other. I'll try and remember to link that along with the various Rubens Crush series that I've had here uh, just so you can enjoy that. Um, the That beer was really funky, really dry, and really something special. It was a wild ale, so it was quite a bit different from a hazy IPA. Quite a bit. Um, but it's always interesting to see how, how breweries will use the same hops in very different beers. And so you bring those characters, the, those same characters, to very different recipes. And depending on your beer style, depending on the outcome that you want, the, use, the hops are used in different ways. It's not that hops are always added at the same time and place and the same temperature to every brew. You introduce different hops at different times for different reasons. To bring about aromas, to bring about flavors, maybe even textures in certain circumstances. Um... A lot of the times, because hops are very volatile, you don't tend to introduce them early in the process where they're still going to be subjected to a lot of heat, because typically what you'll get then is more, more bitter or less pleasant compounds. Just know that in a beer, it's not a, very, it's not a static process. It's not a static recipe. You have the, the, the brewers have a lot of opportunities to do a lot of different things at a lot of different opportunities, a lot of different places in the process. And uh, so it's just, it, it, you know, just lends to the kind of the theme of the, the superb creativity that, that you have when you're brewing beer. And I say this entirely as one who has only ever drunk beer. I have never brewed it. Uh, my wife bought me a homebrew kit several years ago before I started this channel. And it uh, sat under my bed for two years before I sold it to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> my logic there are so many great brewers making so many great beers out there why would I want to spoil it 
Anyways, let's dive into this one and see what it's all about. Hmm. Okay, there is a... I would characterize it as a warmth. It's not straight up pineapple and... and... and oranges or mandarins or grapefruits. Um, there's definitely um, um, an earthiness even to the smell. Not even earthiness. What is it? it smells round. It smells um, like sweet things. Like it doesn't smell sweet, but it smells like things that are sweet. Um, passion fruit, maybe. Um, they didn't mention that in the in the the the, the notes. Um, it tends to have kind of a, a round, sweet smell. Um, that might be it. And this is how you can tell I'm an amateur. I don't know names for all the things I'm smelling. <laughs> so how do I describe them to you? Uh, as best I can. It smells good. Um, it doesn't smell like... Or, it does smell like things I've had before, and uh, those were good things, so that's good. Let's uh, dive in and see if I have any better luck identifying the tastes. Oh, room temperature pineapple, maybe. Maybe that. Not not, not the only flavor. Not That's not the only. There's still like this kind of round passion fruit-like um, flavor, or smell, not flavor, smell, uh, but like well ripened not just right but well ripened uh room temperature pineapple where it's kind of maximally sweet and minimally acidic possibly eh, let's dive in oh i think those are the nelson sovereign hops i do i do think so indeed um there is a very it tastes like it's going to be a thick, a thickly sweet flavor initially. But then that fades to a, to a, um, a very herbal dryness that is still in my mouth and is now broaching full on pine tree like, like West Coast IPA all the way. But as that kind of started here and then thinned out here, what a bloomed around it was something else. <laughs> Pillowy is an appropriate adjective. This is very low acidity. It's tasting very much of um, like very ripened fruits. Not just right. There's no green fruit tartness to this. It is like well ripened. They are they are at the peak of sweetness, but the the valley <laughs> the valley of brightness, right? Um so the fruit as it's super soft and squishy and just about to go bad, right? Just about to turn into something alcohol fermented. Well, this is fermented. Yeah. And then it has kind of this, the, the creaminess just kind of surrounds the whole thing. And it's kind of a, almost a combination, combination between like, if you turn a coconut into a marshmallow, right? So you have that, you know how coconut has this, this uh, really mellow, milky, almost flavor but then think of that like pillowed out right um that's pretty cool very tropical uh very different tropical from say a black raven um uh samish haze there's some definite similar notes but in general it's it's a the for, uh the samish haze focuses or has more fruity acidity and this has very much less fruity acidity um and this one has a very much stronger hop character this is a strongly hopped like um like full-on super bitey 
West Coast IPA level of pine tree hops, which plays interestingly with the very, very ripe, sweet tropical fruits that it starts out with. Out with. So you start, you come in kind of thinking, oh, this is going to be like a super, super creamy, uh, milky almost, uh, maybe milkshake IPA kind of thing. And then you're left with this kind of mouthful of pine, which isn't unpleasant, right? Um, if I were, I might prefer to drink this like as cold as absolute possible. This was out of the fridge maybe 10 minutes and I think fresher out of the fridge, like straight out of the fridge and maybe a cold fridge in particular, it would be optimal. Uh, my wife just bought this today, actually, so it might not have had as much time to chill in the fridge as as it could have. Um, and so that that's probably also a factor, too. I think it came up to room temperature a bit quicker. And I'm thinking that's... I'm not going to say it's a bad beer. It's a tasty beer. I just think that a little bit colder, that mouthful of pine needle would be a little bit more tempered, and you'd get... oh. Hi, bunny rabbit. There's a bunny rabbit right over there. Little baby first year bunny rabbit. Um, eating my lawn that I haven't cut. Um, so I think if this were... You, you want this beer to be super cold in order to get the balance that it's designed to be drunk at. Is what I'm going to say. Yeah. And I'll leave it at that. Anyways, this is me, Matthew, drinking Rubens Brews... Non-stop crush, hazy India pale ale, part of their crush series. And, uh, yeah, Mr. Crush was my father. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Say that with a, a <laughs> UK accent instead of an Australian one. I'm sorry, Mr. Crush. Or, sorry, Crush. Um, this is me <laughs> signing off, lingering on as I'm wont to do. And I'll catch y'all on the flip side. <laughs>